Yeah, looking for chance. Yeah, but I found me big dollars and still won't see. No, no, look, cause I keep mobbing. This, 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 this one is for the fans. Who know that I'm a fucking problem? We don't play no games. It's your Pharaoh Crimson of the Get It in Blood family. Download my new hit single, This Is For, and look for my latest album, Tosa, to drop in the new year. Let's get it together. Let's get it in blood. We here, Smad Papa. You know, I like to give y'all a history of this shit because mm-hmm. without the history, you don't know where you're going. You don't know who created what. It's hard to know the identity of what you're following. You gotta know the history. So we here in the International Goods showroom mm-hmm, mm-hmm. with all this good stuff around. I know y'all see it. We did the walkthrough already mm-hmm. with um, International P mm-hmm, mm-hmm. from the Fight Club, the voice that's synonymous <laughs> with battle rap as far as hold it down, hold it down. I know y'all remember that shit. I know y'all remember that shit. My man Vaughn Jeff, who yes, was sir. one of the a rs here and responsible for picking out a lot of the battle talent as well as people. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Shout out to Vaughn Jeff, man. But it's that executive Nick, too. Executive Nick. Shout out to exec- executive Nick. Mm-hmm. Um, but is that how it started? Like, how how did the Fight Club, like, start? Like, day one start? Like, day one, I, who had the so, idea? So, we had a studio um, called Dark Dimension Studio, right? right. And um, we, we was developing a couple of artists at the time. One of the artists we was developing was an artist by the name of Leah B. About, mm-hmm. right? At the time, Leah we had, B. Had, Lea, yeah, Leah B. About. Um, and at the time, we had hired, like, a secretary. But the secretary also rapped. She went by the name Lady J. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a lot of a lot of dudes in and out, you know, the studio, and they were like predominantly the only two women like were, that would really be around. Um, they got into it, mm-hmm. you know, to the point that it almost got physical. So one of them had said, or, or you remember what was over? Huh? What was over? <laughs> we gonna get into it a little man. I don't remember. Right. Um, so right. yeah, so they got into it, and um, they both was artists. Mm-hmm. And um, long story short. We decided, yo, why don't y'all battle it out? You know what I'm saying? And it was corny when the girl, cause the, the girl said it, the um, one Leah Beer about girl said it. And when she said it, it sounded corny, cause it almost sounded like, oh, you scared of fighting that you want to battle her, right? Yeah. But you know, you can't tell me nothing like that, cause I make it a show. Right. Exactly. You know what? That more bad, we doing it tonight. Da, 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 what? And I got in that same hype shit that, you know, I got that later on known for, for the show, and we right. set it up that night. Right. And look, I'm gonna say this before he say it. Lady J was brought by J Spice. J Spice brought J. <laughs> Lady J to my uncle. He out there, you know. He don't like that. That, that, that he ain't mentioned in the club, Fight Club Legacy or whatever. He brought Lady J. Shout out to Uncle Spice. And right, so they so they battled right? right. And from that day, we had another. We had a couple of other dudes in the studio too. So this is what happened. That battle. I had a couple other dudes that was already like practice battle. So what I did was I set it up as a show. I said, I'm gonna be the pre card, like like a boxing match. Right. And the big fight of the night is gonna be these two girls. Right. So we did that shit. Um, at the time, it was Rick did you film it? No, no, we ain't filmed that first one. <clears throat> mm. I know. I, I believe we did. We did film the first one. We did film the first one. Um, Riz Morales used to always hang out with us at the studio. Shout out to him. He the um A and R. A vice president of Atlantic right now. Right. He saw the vision. He was like, yo, this could be really be a fucking show. Let's just do this. Let's do this every week. And we start doing this shit every week. And eventually, you know, he brought over Ebro. He brought over um people from MTV. Like the second week we did it, MTV was like, yo, we wanna make this into a show. It was like the second week, the second time we did it. So was there a rep from M- MTV in the building? Nah, what happened was the internet didn't exist. But Ebro, he was newly to the city. Ebro just had came to the city. And like I said, like every just like Fight Club is the hangout of all the star- stars and talent now in New York, it was like that back then. Huh. And Ebro used to hang out at fight at, at, at um what was then Dark Dimensions, now Fight Club. Mm-hmm. And he just happened to witness it and he would go back to the radio. He was the um he wasn't on the mic yet, he was just the um the, the radio programmer. Right. But he would have the people from the radio talk about it and that was like the internet. Mm-hmm. So because the radio was talking about it, he was all the way lit. And then Butterman from MTV used to come through the spot and he saw the shit. 
he took it back to the office. Like, yo, these kids got something crazy. We need to put this on TV. Right. And eventually, you know, first they came with some bullshit deals, so it took us a minute, but eventually they got their shit right. And so, so when so it came- So hold on, hold on, because we, skip, we skipping a lot of pieces. Mm -hmm. We skipping a lot of pieces. As I sit here and I sit- Wait, pass, pass me that soda, man. Pass me that soda. Oh, oh, right oh, yeah, yeah. That, yo, listen, and this is that Mountain Dew Melon. Mountain Dew Melon. that International Goods, they ain't got them nowhere else. Come sip over here, take oh. like Jolly Ranchers. The, in but, case anybody wants to- Come through here and get some of the stuff. How do how do they even get in contact? I N T L P goods. I N T L P goods on Instagram. I N T L P goods. Okay, y'all okay, got it. Mm -hmm. Y'all got it. We gonna put it at the bottom of the screen. Um, mm -hmm. so the Lady J situation mm -hmm. was the first one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What was the second one? Who who was a part of it? Any names? That the we second heard one. Nah, ain't with no names that y'all gonna remember. And the second time we did it was just like a bunch of people came through. Um, I think French came to like the third one that we did, but the second one like a bunch of people came through. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember it was this girl, Katana. Remember Katana? Katana, Katana was like the star back then. So Katana, hey, Lady J was like the shit, right? And then Katana came, took Lady J out. Mm. From the start. Fight Club always been some shit that the women started too. That's crazy. Right, the women, there, there was the headline. Yeah. So Katana took our late, and at the time, again, my Uncle Spice used to hang out with Remy Martin. Right. And he used to bring Remy Martin to the studio, and she saw what was going on, so she wanted to jump in, and she actually battled the dude first. Beat the dude. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. So you got footage of Remy versus who? Who was the guy? Some dude, I forgot the dude's name. I forgot the dude's name, but it was some dude she battled first. She battled a couple dudes first. And then she bought it, and then I think she took out Katana. But what year was this? This was, um... This was like 2002, 2003. 2002. 2003. Wow. I might be getting the years a little, a little wrong. It was all right. But two, two, 2002, 2003. So, so Remy wasn't Remy yet? No, no. The song, the, um, as a matter of fact, her first big song dropped, like, the same month. And that was Annie Up. Annie Up. It had dropped, like, the same month, and then... She became big in Fight Club a star, and then that's when Lean Back came out, and that, you know, after she that, took off. Yeah, after yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. But in between that time, somehow y'all put together Remy Martin versus Lady Luck, Lady Luck, and a bunch of other battles. And it was two. It was Remy Martin, Lady Luck one, Remy Martin, Lady Luck two. It was two of them. Wow. First it was one, a rematch. Yeah. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm I didn't know about the That's out on the internet right now. I can go Google that right now and I found it. MTV, Fight Club, Ray Moore, I'm Lady Luck Battle. Wow. So I'll tell you, and I'll tell you how that came about. Mm -hmm. It's crazy, because remember I told you, Remy was in there busting ass in mm -hmm. the Fight Club. Right. I had, because I had, I, I was always in and out the country, like, you know, taking rappers out the country. So I happened to be in Japan. I was in Japan taking Mr. Cheeks out there. Mm -hmm. We in Japan, and I get the call from Japan, from, 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 one of the CEOs of the Fight Club, like, yo, we got Ray Moore in here, we got this girl, Lady Luck, said she won a battle, right? yo, when you come back Monday from Japan, then we doing a battle right there. So that Ray Moore and Lady Luck battle, when I'm wearing the hat, the, um, the Gucci hat, and the fucking, um, the Burberry shit, I just had got off the plane in Japan. Wow. And came, went and did that battle. Wow. We did that shit, that shit went crazy, went viral back then, which was really radio and all of that. Yeah, right. And, but in the streets, everybody, the street, everybody, everybody was talking about, about it. it. DVDs and all that. Right. So, the so DVDs we had signed. So we did that. When we told MTV, no, Universal came at us, and Universal mm -hmm. came gave us a, a distribution deal with the DVD. So we sold like a hundred thousand DVDs of that, which at the time it was unheard of. Right. And um, that's what made MTV came back and say, yo, we'll give that whatever y'all want for the deal. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And then that's when you guys come in. Like, after that, that's when you know the shit that's started. It was it's started Friday. Right. Mavs, the Sirius Jones, Jones. Young James, the, you know what I'm saying? The shit just kept going up. We did the, the Power Summit in Puerto Rico, which the Power Summit was like going viral as well back then. Mm, the and, whole industry was. Yeah, because of the Power Summits, because of the Power Summits, this was the one. Remember, now it was easy. You put a record out, everybody in the internet, could, everybody in the industry could hear it at the same time. Right. Back, then, back then, it wasn't like. Back then you had record pools, so you had to send your record out to one person and wait they get there and they hope that the nigga hear it. So the industry would have this one exclusive event every year. The thing I could most compare it to is like the Rockefeller brunch. And it power was summit. the power summit. And it was basically the labels would pay for the DJs, who the DJs was the most important like like piece of the game. They still are, but back then even more, because mm -hmm. there wasn't no internet. 
the detail, this was to cater to the DJ to show the upcoming talent that every set label had coming out for the year. Yeah, I, I, I remember though, but it was so, a yeah. power summit, it was a core DJs the conference. Core, yeah, the core DJs was like a smaller version of it down yeah. south. The power summit was like everybody. Like the, the label, everybody yeah. was going And it was like, a, and it was, you know, it was international because it was never in America. It would be like in the, one year it was in Puerto Rico, the right. other year it was in oh, fucking yes. Dominican, you know. But, but see, see y'all going too fast. Yeah. Y'all going too fast. Hold mm -hmm. on. Let's rewind a little bit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, Lady Luck mm -hmm. versus Remy Ma. Mm -hmm. The chatter of the streets was mm -hmm. Remy had a third round mm -hmm. that was crazy. Mm -hmm. Y'all remember that round? Mm -hmm. Damn. So you you get to that level. Now everybody who who sees what's going on mm -hmm. sees uh, the MTV footage. Everybody's trying to get in here and get their name up. Mm -hmm. so back then, if you ain't have a hundred grand to put into promoting yourself, mm -hmm. you were basically nobody. You were stuck. You know what I mean? You, you was looking for a shot in the dark, a mm -hmm. one in a million situation where you run into somebody who liked you that much that they brought you in. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But other than that, if you didn't have the bread, you were not going nowhere. Right. And everybody at that time, from Philly to Jersey, to down south, to London, everybody saw Fight Club as an avenue. Shout out to everybody in London, man, that supported us. We went out there for them too. Them people really took care of us. Yeah, yeah, London fans are like the best. Love y'all. Mm -hmm. Love y'all. This is a metamorphosis, and it all begins at the orphanage. I often drift in the smoky sport of bliss and get lost to it. I'm fortunate. Since my origin and coordinates, my awesomeness keeps the orbit lit. I have to fall and hit the bottom of a bottomless pit before I call it quits. Force the sorceress out the fortress with all the subordinates. My story.